been only averaging about 12 turnovers, forcing 11. That's not too egregious. No, not bad at all, and that's one of the problems for Northeastern. They have some nights where they'll turn that ball over 15, 18, 20 times. But they can shoot it. If they don't turn it over, there's a pretty good chance they'll score. That was the first touch for Atherton. He misses the shot. Here comes Stitt, the senior out of Butler High School in Charlotte. Another steal by Walker. That's his second steal. This time, Walker will finish himself. You mentioned Atherton. He was a preseason first team all CAA, and he's lived up to that, ranked in many categories, including number nine in the nation in field goal percentage. Yeah, that's right. He comes in uh, averaging just over 60%, just a hair over 60%, actually higher in conference play. Good feed inside, and there's the flush by Ajay Baru. The senior, he had a big block and now a big dunk. And a big bucket, too, because they needed that one. They were down 4 nothing, and uh, they cut that lead in half. A little faster pace sort of so seats, uh, suits Northeastern a little bit better. Charleston wants this game a little bit more under control. DJ Williams down on the baseline, and there's going to be a block, and it's going to go against uh, Ajay Baru. 6'9", 250-pound senior out of the Ivory Coast. He, uh, his first rebound tonight gave him 900 for his career. Walker with an explosive baseline move and gets the bucket. He's got four. He, he is such a talented player, probably their most talented player, even though Etherton is the guy that's the first team pick. Yeah, we mentioned he was a conference co-conference player of the week, but the last uh, six games or five games averaging almost 19 points, six assists and four rebounds. Bailey, deep corner, doesn't go. Etherton pulls down the rebound. Charleston with a relatively small lineup, really going with four guards against a really big Northeastern team. And Quincy Ford pulls up and hits the three. He has a, about as good a looking stroke as anybody in the league. And he's got 47 threes now as well on the season. He's got a seven foot little brother coming to Northeastern too, signed in the early period. Remember when seven footers were so coveted? Not that they're not anymore, but uh, isn't it more of a guard oriented game nowadays? Well, it's just that the bigs have those guard skills. That's true, that's true. Mirai, good hustle, Barry. That'll be a three if it goes. And it's knocked out of bounds by Bailey. And there's going to be a timeout on the floor as we're inside that 16-minute mark. Senior Knights uh, in Charleston, and right now it's a 9-2 lead for the Huskies of Northeastern. The preseason number one, if they win, they'll have a uh, possibly a share of the conference championship. Ajay Baru, the only two buckets on the flush. They trail by seven. Cheer for the stumbles. The heat should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. It's 3 p.m. For 50 million kids across America, school's out. And for a third of these kids, they're out on their own. Out with nowhere to go and nothing to do. But every afternoon is a chance to change America's future. All you have to do is open the door. It's time to support the Boys and Girls Clubs. Great futures start here. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig.
Well, back inside TD Arena, we have a 9-2 ball game as uh, we take a look at uh, Earl Grant in his first season. Hired September 2nd, and now here he is already with his first senior night as they wrap up his first regular season. There's some confusion down in the court after the inbounds pass. And now we're ready to go as the Huskies uh, with a seven-point lead will inbound it. Reggie Spencer uh, gets it to Quincy Ford. You know, Coach, uh, Northeastern already has gotten eight shots off, and there's uh, 15 minutes to go. Yeah, the four turnovers by the College of Charleston has gotten them off to a slow start here. But their defense uh, you know, has been the thing that has kept them in games among the best in the league, field goal percentage defense and scoring defense. There's a bump, and it's going to go against the Cougars. As Donovan Gilmore, the 6'7 freshman from Greensboro, picks up his first. And uh, Bill Cohen going back to the bench now as Williams is in and Walker is out. That's interesting. Uh, Still have 15 minutes to go, and Walker, he's two for three. It looks like he's limping a little bit, though. That would not be good news, and he is coming to the attention of the trainer. He's rubbing that left knee. There's a steal by the Cougars. And will they finish? Chile. A crossover, and one. He gets the fall with a chance for the three-point play. Chile, the sophomore out of Orlando, Florida, has had an outstanding year. He's played the two a lot, came in more of a scoring guard, but has had to play the one with Anthony Stitt out with an injury, and it's just made him a better and better player, one of the best guards in the league. Yeah, Stitt had 98 assists last year, Coach, and uh, Chile, as you mentioned, has 103 assists as he knocks down the free throw as well and caps off the three-point play. Good on ball defense by Cameron Johnson, another of the good looking freshman out of Athens, Georgia. Clark Central High School. Atherton thought about it from outside. You look at the Cougars, uh, they're only averaging about 59 points a game, but they play some good defense. Uh, case in point right there as Barry gets the block. Barry's a really talented guy. He can shoot it like the Barry name would insinuate, but he's also a good slasher, good athlete, good defender, a very good rebounder. Well, speaking of shooting, his, his dad is the only player to lead the NCAA, the ABA, and the NBA in scoring. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive when you think about it. Cougars uh, down to seven seconds on the shot clock. Down to four. Chile takes it all the way in, high off the window. Beautiful play. What an outstanding play, going strong to his right hand. Knew the clock. Walker ready to come back in. And Etherton this time goes out. So Etherton uh, catching a breather. Bill Cohen. To notch his uh, third 21 season, as well as a notch a share of the title. They won the title, the first uh, ever for Northeastern just two years ago. So that'll be his second in three years again if UNCW loses at Elon. And coach, they were trailing, right? They were trailing by 12 late in the first half. Begley kicks it out to the baseline, and a nice touch uh, by Reggie Spencer, the senior. Reggie Spencer, a good story. He was a three-year starter, had, had thigh surgery, hip surgery in the offseason, has had a couple of injuries since then. But, hey, he's hung in there and is a great defender, good rebounder, and a, just a good team guy. He really understands how to play. Now only 40 points away from joining the 1,000-point club. This one rims out. Zach Stahl clears. 11-7. Huskies by four. Walker, that's a three if it goes. Battle for the rebound, and they're going to say that the Cougars touched it last. Glenn Pierre Jr., the 6'11 sophomore out of Orlando. A physical down inside. That suited Reggie Spencer just fine. You know, it's interesting, uh, the Huskies plus five, you talk about the physicality, plus five on the glass, minus one against Elon. And when they don't rebound, they don't win. Yeah, if they get out-rebounded, they are 0-7. That's an amazing stat. They better win the Battle of the Boards. 
It's also amazing too when you talk about numbers. If they score 70 and above, they win. If they score 69 and below, they lose most times. Yeah, 11 and 0 if they score 70 and above. Let's touch that time. It was Terrence O'Donoghue, sophomore. Boy, Williams takes it right into the teeth of the defense, and uh, T.J. Williams will be going to the line shooting two. Williams a big, strong point guard, and, uh, and, and has done a really good job in his sophomore year out of Pflugerville, Texas. I you know, you watch the Cougars play. Excuse me. You, they, you watch the Cougars play. We watched them practice yesterday and today. They've just come off a really tough loss on the road at Hoster. They've won three of their last 21 games, but they, th that didn't look like a team that was beat down. They play. They played with enthusiasm in practice both days, getting ready for this senior night. That's a great point. When you score 40 points, you wonder what kind of team will, will bounce back. From. Here they beat William and Mary here. They scored 80. And then they scored 40. Even though when they scored 80 in that win over the Tribe, though, Earl Grant was saying, hey, we gave up 72. That's way too many points. Yeah, Earl, Earl Grant has done a really good job. He's going to really build this program back to what it once was. And he and his staff did a really good job of getting this bunch ready to play uh, when, when really they could have packed it in. They were going to be the 10th seed regardless. Another steal by the Huskies. Zach Stahl. Wow, nice body control. Looks like it was going to be a charge. He just kind of floated around him. Those turnovers just kill you because you give up a high percentage shot when you get those live ball turnovers. Last game, what did Coach Grant say? That uh, they had traveling on maybe five of the first ten possessions in that Hofstra game? And Northeastern has done one thing they wanted to do, get off to a good start. They got down 21-10 at Elon, and then in the second half, it started out 18-7 Elon. So they've done a better job of being ready to play from the opening tip. Anybody can beat anybody in this league. Obviously, we've talked about that. Do you think the human element, do you think maybe the Huskies, they won't admit it, but maybe they went into Elon thinking, okay, we're going to take care of these guys. And they, slow starts, they took them a little bit lightly. I don't not. think Coach Cohen would allow that. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we, we covered that base then. <laughs> We're going to take a timeout right now. We've got a 14 to 10 ball game with 11 to 17 to go here in the first half. It's very exciting to actually be working on the uh, cutting edge of cancer research. The trip to Brazil was my first time out of the United States. It was actually my first time on an airplane. I decided to be a medical illustrator after I'd done most of my biology classes. Working for the PGA showed me I would love to do something in hospitality. College basketball on the American Sports Network is brought to you by CokeCareers.com. And back in Charleston, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, uh, Bobby Kremen's here to honor uh, John Kress. This is John Kress Court inside TD Arena. That's John Kress, former coach right there at uh, Center Court, going into the Hall of Fame here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to believe, but he still worked, so they couldn't put him in the Hall of Fame. They had to waive the rule to get him in the Hall of Fame, and, and certainly if anybody belongs in their Hall of Fame, it's John Kress. Had the opportunity to coach against this gentleman, and, you know, he and Bobby are two of the classiest guys. It's kind of fitting that they both coached here in historic Charleston, South Carolina. 
Press, of course, leading them to an NAIA National Championship back in 1983. But uh, 13 conference championships, uh, boy, those are Mac McCarthy type numbers, right? When you were at Chattanooga? <laughs> you no, 12? no, no. We're not mentioned in the same breath as John Press. Ah, you're being modest now. What'd you have? Uh, 12 championships in nine years or something like that, or nine championships <laughs> in 12 years or something like that? Or... Hey, man, I told you my math skills aren't that don't bad. Don't try, man. <laughs> There's a whistle to the foul as Etherton, still looking for his first bucket, takes it in hard, and he takes the hard foul, and he'll be going to the line shooting two. He's a 68% shooter. Look at that score there, huh? It's halftime now. Elon just upsetting Northeastern, and now they're all over the Seahawks by 15. And again, to keep you apprised, if Elon wins that game and Northeastern wins this game, it's going to be a four-way tie for the regular season title. And, and Matt Matheny's group, they, they can beat the top of the league. They've proven that. They yeah. beat William and Mary. They beat this Northeastern team two nights ago, and now they're beating UNCW, a team that could win the title outright if they could go in there and win over in Burlington, North Carolina. Who's uh, who's the diamond in the rough going into the CAA tournament right now? Do you think? Oh gosh, you know, we talked about that. How many different teams could could win in Baltimore? It's going to be a really exciting tournament. Yeah, I'd pay for a, a ticket. I know you wouldn't pay, but I'd pay for a ticket to go see that one. You get, I'd go with you if you bought mine. You get limousine service from the hotel. And <laughs> Life's good on the American Sports Network. <laughs> Down to six again on the shot clock. Give it to your playmaker. He takes a deep three, a little bit too strong. There's the long rebound. Baru with a brand new 35. Nice job by Baru. Great pursuit of the ball. Long rebound in a crowd, and Baru went and got it. So the Cougars, uh, no hurry to take the shot. They worked that shot clock down. Down by six, 16 to 10. Inside of the big guy, and a lot of traffic down there. Baru is going to be called with traveling with the basketball. Got up on his knees, and uh, not much he could do. There was three guys surrounding him, and they all had red jerseys. Yeah, great hustle, but that's now six turnovers. They only average 12 per game, and we're still 10 minutes into the game. Not good news uh, in that department for Earl Grants. But the Huskies shooting the ball very well on the road, and they only lead by six as we move inside the 10-minute mark. It's fun to watch on offense. All of them can score. They are really good at passing to each other. Boy, case in point, nice pass, and Etherton's going back to the line. Earl Grant was saying that uh, they passed the ball probably better than anyone he's seen in college basketball, at least this season. Yeah, they really share the ball well, and their offense lends itself to that. Bill Cohen and his staff have put these guys in a situation where, where they can have some success. It wouldn't shock you at all if they had five guys in double figures. So Etherton hits another free throw. Etherton three times the CAA Player of the Week. A Walker named twice. Williams had it once, so that's six times a Husky being awarded the Conference Player of the Week. Etherton is perfect from the line. That's four free throws now, and we have an 18 to 10 game. Both teams have stayed man to man. You know, sometimes on, on a one day prep like this that Northeastern had, or even a two day prep, despite the travel for uh, the long trip for uh, Charleston, uh, you'll see a little bit of zone come out, but both coaches have stayed with what they really believe in. Very. Brings up a three. That's going to be his 61st this year, Coach. Really nice baseline drive. He knew it was coming, had his feet set, and knocked it down. Barry had 27 last year on senior day against a very good Delaware team. Delaware, of course, went to the NCAA, beating William & Mary by one in the conference championship. Boy, a nice spin move by Zach Stahl, and he's followed with a chance for another three-point play. You mentioned he had kind of lost confidence in his offensive ability a little bit, but uh, he's looked very confident today. He got a couple easy wins in transition, and watch this little spin move. You know, at, at every position on the floor, Northeastern is bigger than College of Charleston. That, and, and that manifests itself in a lot of different ways, whether it's matchups on the board or individual matchups in the post like that. Well, that's another thing that Coach Grant mentioned besides the passing. He says their size, they're so big. 
You know, Stahl with seven points already. He had a double-double the last time the Cougars and the Huskies met. There's a whistle down by the baseline. As a matter of fact, back on January 17th, that was a two-point ball game. Uh, the Huskies won at 69-67. And that was on their home court. Good job creating that balance situation by Terrence O'Donohue. Hit the three earlier. He's now four for ten. That was only his fourth, but he's shooting 40% from three and a good-looking stroke. Beautiful stroke. We saw Devon Begley check in for Spencer for the Huskies. There's Bailey. He can light it up as well. So Bailey, they say he could be the best outside shooter they have. Well, just a freshman out of Canton, Ohio. 6'6", 250, playing a little bit out of position. But, but he's also a mismatch when he takes a big guy out away from the basket, and he can really shoot the basketball too. Mentioned Bailey from Ohio. Walker's from the Buckeye State as well. David Walker from Stowe, Ohio. And this time the Huskies uh, turn it over, and the Cougars will have a chance to uh, cut into this five-point deficit. See the three-point field goals. Uh, three for the Cougars. They really struggled in that last loss against Hofstra. Barry, that's a two, but nice stroke. It looks like he's found a groove. He looks like a guy who comes from a basketball family, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put you to the test here before this broadcast is over with all the Barry boys who played in Division I college basketball. I'll be ready. I'll be ready for that. Ford gives it up to Spencer. Looking for Walker, and boy, you talk about that passing. Sometimes they say they could be too unselfish, but that looked pretty there. That's really nice. You know, there wasn't a lot of room in there, but they found each other and got the high percentage look. Baseline jumper. And another nice touch by O'Donoghue, so he's got a three and a two off the bench. Spencer moved him off the block, but O'Donoghue just took what he gave him. And we have a three-point ball game at 23-20. Stahl, wow, found the open man. Who was it? Was it Grant telling us yesterday some guys can drive the basketball? Or no, I guess it was Cohen saying some guys, they lock in on the rim and other guys can see the open guys. That was a nice job by Spencer finding the open man. Yeah, he was complimenting Chile on that. Doesn't go down for Barry that time. Excuse me, that was Spencer that scored the last bucket. It was Stahl who found the open man, excuse me. Boy, David Walker getting a lot of attention on the defensive end by the yeah. Cougars. Chile took up that space in a hurry, didn't he? There's a reach and a foul on O'Donohue. And we're inside the eight-minute mark at 6.16, so we're going to take another time out here. Very quick first half rolling by. And we've got a five-point ball game. Huskies 25-20 over the Cougars. Coke Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke.
Well, we said Bobby Cremens was in the house, and I wasn't lying. There's uh, the former Georgia Tech and Charleston coach. He recruited these seniors. It's nice of him to drive up from Hilton Head to uh, see them play their final home game. You know, Bobby Cremens is one of those guys, he just doesn't have any enemies. No. And usually coaches always have somebody <laughs> that doesn't like them. Everybody likes Bobby Cremens. He's a friendly guy, huh? He, he is one of the classiest gentlemen I've ever met. And, uh, and gosh, what a great job he did, not only here, but, of course, for years at Georgia Tech and at Appalachian State before that. Uh, he's a fun guy to be around as we uh, check out number 33 there. Zach Stahl already with seven points. Reggie Spencer goes to the line, a 77% shooter. And you see uh, O'Donohue, the sophomore, he's got three fouls already. We still have six minutes to go, 6.16 to go in the first half. But it's been a good first half, Coach. Uh, the uh, road team shooting 56%, home team 53%. Yeah, and College of Charleston got off to a slow start with the turnovers and missing shots. But like you mentioned, they're up to eight for 15 and three out of seven from three. So Reggie Spencer now 37 points away from 1,000. Uh, if he should reach it, Etherton's already there. Walker is closing in, as is Ford. So they could have four 1,000-point scores if they could go deep into the tournament, get some extra games. Yeah, there aren't, there aren't many better sixth men in the league than Reggie Spencer. You start for three years, and, and he's accepted this role as a guy coming off the bench, giving them energy and, and physical play, like right there. Goes against the Huskies. It's going to go against uh, number 44, Spencer. Spencer goes out. So Spencer gets called for the foul. They go with Kwesi Obaka, the 6'8 redshirt sophomore from uh, Georgia, checks in to take his place. Obaka's an interesting guy, can really run and jump, really good defender, really good shot blocker. Not a great offensive player. Bailey's two for two from outside, so he's hit 26 and 27. Obaka's length and athleticism didn't bother Bailey at all, did it? Well, Bailey uh, playing the four. I'm sure uh, next year he'll have more threes uh, when they can get him into the three spot. You know, put that in perspective for us, Coach. I mean, kids never complain, but it's it's uncomfortable playing out of position. Yeah, He's, but but it's also an advantage sometimes because just like that play, the fours don't really want to come out there and guard him. No, good point, good point. There's Barry. Which Bailey goal? again. Coach Cohn was talking about it, it really at two different game plans for the for the four guard lineup and for the lineup when College of Charleston goes with two bigger guys. Chile with four on the shot clock to whistle as he released the ball. And the Huskies will be charged with yet another one. Number 20, Devon Begley, the 6'4 freshman out of Maryland, Texas, gets the foul. Etherton are getting ready to check back in for the Huskies now. I talked to Earl Grant in November, and, and they hadn't even gotten really started yet, and he said, Chile is going to be our best playmaker. When, when the clock is running down, we're going to want the ball in his hands, and he's going to get better and better, and he's done exactly what Coach Grant predicted. Well, we saw him drop 30 on Charlotte uh, back in December. We had seven threes. He's got six already here in the first half, and he's looking for his 10th straight game in double figures. So Coach Grant, obviously not happy with the 3-14 and 14 season in the CAA, but he's got some nice young ball players. And uh, he was pretty honest yesterday. He said, you know, they're still looking for their identity at this point. No real vocal leaders. And he said, great kids. He loves the kids. But sometimes you just don't inherit vocal leaders. Yeah, and, and they've hung in there, continued to play hard, and played mostly close games. Uh, Wednesday night at Hofstra being the exception. And everybody has those games once in a while, right? Yeah. You, you have too many of them, you end up over here working with you. <laughs> <laughs> you throw away the game tape. Is it easy to uh, wash that out of your memory, or those kind of games just kind of linger on? You've got to have a short memory. Even if you got to fake it, you got to have a short memory. Begley carried the ball, showed some explosiveness as he uh, tried to uh, score off the dribble. Another turnover for the Huskies, and we're coming back right now, and the Cougars uh, with a bucket can take the lead. Yeah, that little hesitation dribble. If you catch that ball, if it comes to rest in your hand and you change speeds like he did, they're going to get you on that one. 
This is Stitt with the basketball, still looking for his first bucket on senior night. When he came out of Butler High School, he was actually rated the number one point guard in the state of North Carolina. Johnson. Boy, Johnson puts out a move. That's his first bucket, and they have their first lead. Yeah, we mentioned him, another really good freshman, 6'4", 200, and he's, a, he's another one who's just got more and more comfortable. Can really shoot the ball, really athletic, can really defend, too. It's been a crazy season. We could have a, a four-way tie, or will the Huskies blow a chance at a share of the ch championship? Inside 10 seconds now for the Huskies. And a little runner by Williams, beautiful shot. His first field goal, he's got three. Yeah, and again, size, T.J. Williams, long, big, strong. Sophomore, which you mentioned, you know, over 100 assists and averaging double figures. Lead goes back to the Huskies. Remember, back in January, 69-67, we could have another nail-biter here. Deep corner pocket. Bring it up, it's another three for Barry. Yeah, Walker lost Barry, and they know better than to lose each other. They both can burn <laughs> you. Well, when Barry's hot, he can be hot, huh? Advantage Barry on that play. Barry comes up with the ball. You know, Mark Adams talking about him at the top of the broadcast in the studio. Boy, in high school, four-point GPA. He was All-State in badminton, tennis. Basketball, leading score, leading GPA. He was an Eagle Scout, and this time he drove the basketball. An Eagle Scout. Got a Colorado spring. Beautiful out there. I mean, uh, <laughs> the reason I repeated Eagle Scout almost seems too perfect. How could somebody have a four point GPA? All state and three. Two or three different sports. Yeah, he clearly wasn't in your your and my plan. No, no, no. <laughs> High off the window doesn't go, and this one's uh, taken down by Glenn Pierre Jr. Carlson has gotten back in this game, shooting the three and playing really good defense. Five out of nine from threes right now. Boy, Bailey thought about it. Stitt still looking to score, but Stitt, keep in mind, he's, he missed seven games earlier with that injury you talked about earlier. This is Stitt with the ball, gives it up. Boy, good ball movement, and that's going to be another three. This time it's Johnson. Great ball movement, baseline drive, kick it to the corner drift, quickly reverse it, and get the three. Huskies come right back. Walker tries to erase that three, and uh, he is fouled, so he'll get two when we come back. But the Cougars have opened up a five-point lead on senior night. And we're inside two minutes before the first half. Senior night, so many times, nobody has a crystal ball. There's no guarantees. But a lot of times, that senior night brings extra energy inside the building. And the Cougar fans have come out to honor these seniors, as well as Coach Kress and Coach Premitz. Senior night, unless you're coaching, of course, we talked about all the conference championships you had at Shoot Chattanooga. But as we take another look at the three, when we come back, I want to hear that story about your senior night where you blew it in the locker room, Coach. Stick around, 33-28. son or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me you're still awake have a seat on old mr. bench at least your buns will fall asleep <laughs> is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college hey man T, move down. it's a tearjerker
got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in the smallest face. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Cougars by five on senior nights. I mentioned extra energy on senior night. You went to the NCAA tournament five times when you were at Tennessee Chattanooga, but finish the story on senior night, the one you blew in the locker room. My first senior night, we've already clinched the league. We're starting the hodgepodge lineup. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to really motivate him. I write the 10 reasons why you can't win tonight. We're playing the Citadel at home. And unfortunately, my motivation backfired and the Citadel came into our place and won the basketball game. I don't think Coach Grant used that same strategy tonight. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, Bobby Kremens. I wonder if he ever used a strategy like that. Bobby's used them all. And what was your motivation? You thought they would you'd tick off the guys and get them going? Or, yeah, I yeah. thought they'd be mad. You know, we'll show you. Well, they did. Right. <laughs> Walker has seven and eight. Hits both from the line. Well, he's uh, coming into the game. He's hit 17 of his last 18 free throws. Three-point ball game now. Wow, the back door, and it almost worked. Good play coming out of the timeout. Couldn't finish it. Boy, Walker almost threw it away. It's a, a rarity for him. He's been playing really, really well as of late. Yeah, an amazing thing, too. He does. He never fouls. At one time, he was number one in the nation in fewest fouls. Inside shot by Zach Stahl, and he's got nine, so he's flirting with double figures. He's having a really good night. Nine points, three rebounds, made a free throw, has an assist. Really bringing a lot of energy like he always does, but now getting some production too. Inside a minute, we've got a one-point ball game. Barry, catch, shoot, a little bit too strong. Ford rips it down for the Huskies. 36 on the game clock, but 28 right now on the shot clock. Wow, nice feed inside, and Ford's going to the line. Boy, Walker looks like he's getting better and better with each game. I mean, uh, he really fires some nice passes. Great, great vision, and, and you mentioned this is a really unselfish team. Sometimes they do pass too much. Really nice find right there. And a good athletic play by Quincy Ford, the junior out of St. Petersburg Gibbs. Ford with a three, 76% shooter. Etherton going out again. Etherton with four, all from the charity stripe. Still looking for his first field goal. So Ford a 76% free throw shooter. Double figures, two of his last three games, just one for six in that loss to Elon, and uh, he blew the opportunity to tie the game. So the Cougars. They'll go for the final shot with a one-point lead. They'll definitely go for the final shot. Need to shoot it at about five or six to give themselves a chance to get an offensive rebound, but don't shoot it too quick and give Northeastern a chance at the final shot. Well, they're not going to get the shot off, Coach. But they didn't turn it over. No. They still got the lead. So we played 20 minutes. Your thoughts here on senior night. It's 33-32. The College of Charleston started slow, but they calmed down, started taking care of the basketball, and went six for 11 from three to give them a 33-32 lead. Halftime on the ASN Studios coming up. Grant on top 33-32.
come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Wow, has this been a fun conference to watch this season. Thanks, guys. Halftime score in Charleston, Northeastern, and College of Charleston. The CAA has been dynamic this season. The only conference in America with a four-way tie heading into the final week of the season. Also, since January 17th, over 50% of the league's games have been decided by six points or less. Hi there, I'm Mick Schaefer. This is Halftime. It's been competitive all year long, any way you look at it, in this league, the Colonial. And we're not done with that league. A pair of women's games from the Colonial tomorrow. UNCW at College of Charleston at one, and Towson at Drexel at three. The Dragons could still finish second place in this conference. Wednesday, we're back with the men. Richmond, its final road game of the season. UMass, its final home game. Spiders and Minutemen at 7.30 Eastern time. Thursday, after losing 15 of 16 games at one point this season, Marshall has put it together. Now, can they win on the road at ODU? And then Friday, Yale goes to Harvard. I wonder if there's any sort of history or rivalry there. Hmm. Bulldogs and Crimson, another chapter in the book of Americana. Oh, and by the way, they're also two of the top teams in the Ivy League. But first, we still have more basketball tonight. Bakersfield goes to Seattle in the WAC. This one went to OT the first time around. So settle in and watch another great game at 1030 Eastern Time. Stick around. We've got Mark Adams up next to wrap up this halftime as we wrap up February and look ahead to March Madness. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice, where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org.
Hi, college basketball fans. I'm Mark Adams, the primary national college basketball analyst on the American Sports Network. It's time for Mark's Madness as we look at computer rankings by KPI Sports and my own personal opinion as to who's in, who's at large, and who's on the bubble. Let's start with the Atlantic 10. The automatic bid right now we project to be VCU. They knocked off Tennessee, Northern Iowa, Oregon and Cincinnati earlier this season. At large, the Dayton Flyers right now with a, a power ranking of 44. At large, UMass with a power ranking of 46. At large, Davidson, possibly a bubble team as well, with a power ranking of 63. And Rhode Island definitely on the bubble at 86. So let's talk about the Big South and High Point. Right now we project them to be the Big South champion, but you know what? Anything can happen as there are so many teams that are locked up in the top of that conference. That is a wide open race with Coastal Carolina, Winthrop in particular, Charleston Southern and Radford. It is a mosh pit in the Big South. In the Colonial Athletic Association, the automatic bid we project to Northeastern, but UNC Wilmington, William & Mary, James Madison are all in the hunt. For Conference USA, we project the automatic bid to go to La Tech. At large, I like the miners of UTEP. They knocked off Washington State and Xavier, and they're continuing to make a late season run. On the bubble, Old Dominion now drops to 53 in the power rankings, but they have quality wins over LSU and VCU. So watch out for the Colonial right now as we continue to talk about Conference USA, the Colonial, and move to the horizon. Valpo has a power ranking of 76. We project them to win the conference, but Green Bay has a power ranking of 60. They're hanging in there as a potential bubble team. Oakland also in that hunt. Cleveland State also very much alive. In the Ivy League, Harvard has a power ranking of 93. They beat Houston and UMass. Yale right now is a game back. For the automatic in the OVC, Murray State's running away right now. Now, if they get knocked off in the OVC tournament, then maybe anybody can win it. But Murray State is by and far away the best team in the OVC, led by Cameron Payne. In the Patriot League, the automatic we projected to be Bucknell, but Colgate is right in that hunt. In the Southern Conference, Wofford, the Terriers, knocked off NC State earlier this year. Watch out for Chattanooga and Mercer as well in the SOCON tournament. In the WAC, pretty easy. New Mexico State's running away from everybody right now. I project New Mexico State to be the team to represent the WAC in the NCAA tournament. So those are the teams that we project to be in and also to be at large and potentially on the bubble on the American Sports Network. This is not about baseball. It's dedication. It's commitment. It's about developing a mindset in our youth. A mindset that transforms into true character. Disadvantaged. Distressed. New fields envisioned as new opportunities. Instructors teaching life. Lessons learned. This is not about baseball. During our CAA broadcast throughout this season, nominees for the Dean Ehlers Leadership Award from each CAA institution have been highlighted. 
Presented in recognition of the contributions to intercollegiate athletics by the longtime James Madison University athletic director, this award recognizes the men's and women's basketball student athletes who embody the highest standards of leadership, integrity, and sportsmanship in conjunction with their academic and athletic achievements. On this last day of the regular season of conference play and following a vote of CAA administrators, the CAA is proud to announce that Tom Schock of the College of William & Mary and Caleb Donnelly of Northeastern University are co-recipients of the 2014-15 Dean Ehlers Leadership Award for Men's Basketball. Tom Schock currently maintains a 3.7 GPA in the William & Mary Business School and has already been accepted to its master's program for accounting. Off the court, Tom has been a Bible study group leader at the Williamsburg Community Chapel and has been selected to represent William & Mary in the Grant Thornton Program for Emerging Leaders. A member of the National Society of Collegiate Scholars, Tom has been selected for an internship program with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Caleb Donnelly is a chemical engineering major, currently holds a 3.99 GPA. Recently named one of the top 100 most influential students at Northeastern and the class representative to the 2016 American Institute for Chemical Engineers, Caleb volunteered as a citizen teacher through the Citizen Schools program and taught an inner city sixth grade class how to build solar powered toy cars. The Colonial Athletic Association would like to congratulate Tom and Caleb on this prestigious award, as well as all the nominees from each institution. Second half is just around the corner here at the College of Charleston. Stick around. A redhead <gasps> staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire, and that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. Budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me trees. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit getcoveredamerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. 33 to 32, a Canyon Berry. Eight points already for the Cougars. The Scott Etherton, no field goals, just uh, five free throws. He's coming off the uh, 20 point performance in that loss to Elon. And speaking of the last game for the Cougars, 13% from three, first half, buddy. They're 54% from long range. Six for 11, they found the formula. Make threes, defend Etherton, defend Ford, and share the basketball. We talked about Northeastern sharing the basketball. The college, nine assists on 12 field goals. Outstanding. You look at the numbers of the first half. Uh, Coach Cohen, what's he telling his guys? Because they shot, well, they shot almost 50, what, 50? 8% on the road, and they're, they're trailing by one. Yeah, di didn't get a lot of threes, got to the free throw line, but late in the half, they were the one turning the basketball over. Their problem was on the defensive end. They did not do a good job of locating the shooters. When you allow the college to spot up and shoot six for 11, you didn't find the shooters the way you need to. Well, here we go. Conference tournament uh, just around the corner uh, next week. Ten teams, nine games, four days, one champion. For tickets and information, visit caasports.com or baltimore.org. 
The CAA tournament uh, promises to be a great one, and we are underway the final 20 minutes of the regular season for 2014-2015. And the Cougars on senior night uh, open up the second half with a one-point lead over the uh, preseason number one team in the Colonial Athletic Association. A little runner down the lane doesn't go. This one's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by what well, looked like Etherton. They're going to say the Cougars touch it. It's going to be Husky basketball. Both teams, again, doing what the coaches want. Let's play man-to-man -man and see if we can beat you man-to-man. -man. Who's got the best matchups? Both teams had success offensively in the first half, and we'll see who, who turns up the defense here in the second half. Once again, if you joined us late, William & Mary, the leaders upset by Drexel today, 80-66. to So the Huskies uh, playing for at least a share of the championship, possibly. If UNCW gets beat by Elon, and it uh, looks like they're going to get beat by Elon, that'll be back-to-back -back upsets for Coach Matheny's Phoenix. Of course, never say never. That game's not over yet, uh, but we'll keep you up to date. Etherton hadn't gotten started, and a lot of it was due to Baru, and he bothered that shot again. Senior playing big on senior night. Etherton uh, off balance, no doubt about that, on his last uh, field goal attempt. He's trying to get jump started. Only three points in that first half. There's a reach and a foul that's going to go against Etherton. Uh, boy, you look at the uh, Cougars for a team that got beat 73-40 to 40 in their last outing. They got a lot of pep in their step here. Uh, and, and we talked about it. We saw it in practice. They were enthusiastic about playing this game. And, and, and they're not winning the battle of the boards, but they're staying even. That's all they need to do. If they can win it, that's a bonus. It almost guarantees them a victory. <laughs> it really does when you look at the fact that uh, they're 0-7. The Huskies are 0-7 when they lose the battle of the glass. Cougars also had the game at about the pace they want, too. This is Johnson. Johnson sees an opening, takes it, and scores. Oh, they're going to wave it off. Nice elevation, beautiful touch on the glass, but no yeah. bucket. And, and the toughest call in college basketball, we see it every single time we do a game. Is he there? Yes. But again, you know, he's off to the side a little bit. You know, if you're the home team, you think, hey, that's a block. If you're the uh, team in red, <laughs> great call. And they're not going to reverse it, right, regardless. No, nope. <laughs> I never, I never talked anybody into reversing one. Huskies looking uh, for that lead again, down by one. Johnson and Chile doing a good job against Walker. Nice ball fake by Walker. Leans in, and he was inside the three-point line, I believe. And so it's going to be a two-shot foul. Yeah, it's going to be a two-shot foul for Walker. And again, they just put a young man on the line who's shooting 86%, number three in the CAA. Yeah, and, and that's a big difference. That's a concern to Coach Grant. Northeastern's been to the free-throw line now 14 times where the college is only three for three for the game. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. They went to the line 39 times against Drexel and only 12 against Elon. They were seven of 12 from the line, and uh, those two free throws put Walker in double figures. Against Drexel, he was 12 of 12 from the stripe, nine of nine in overtime. But if you want to score 20, 25 points, hit your free throws, huh? Yeah, and they're a really good free throw shooting team, third in the league. Shooting about 71, 72%. Where the college is not a good free throw shooting team, but they're three for three tonight. They just need to get to the line more. But when you shoot a lot of threes, 11 threes in 22 field goal attempts, you're not going to get fouled much. <laughs> Earl Grant over there uh, trying to get an explanation. It's going to be Husky ball. Did they call the foul? Yeah, they're getting the foul straight. Oh, they, oh, I see. They adjusted that shot clock to 33. And there's a foul. And goes against the uh, Cougars as Joe Chile picks up the uh, personal. That's uh, four team fouls already here. We're at the 18-minute mark of the second half. Cougars again going with four guards and Baru.
Well, Walker was too quick for himself that time. Tried the crossover, lost the handle. Little back door cut, and Walker hangs in the air and drops in a bucket. And this game has a lot on the line, Mike. Elon up 21 with just two minutes to go in the game. Wow. Wow. So William and Mary losing today. They'll still get the, the number one. UNCW win or lose, they could go no longer, no lower than two. And Northeastern would be locked in at three should they win. James Madison won today, so if Northeastern wins this game, we have a four-way tie. There's a shot clock violation because that last shot didn't touch the rim. And so we've seen both teams have shot clock violations so far here tonight. Pretty physical play. May have been a foul on the shooter down there on the baseline, but no call, and the game goes on. But how about Drexel beating William & Mary without Damian Lee, their big-time scorer? Yeah, Bruiser just continues to do a great job. Boy, Etherton missed the shot, so he's still looking for that first field goal off of the beautiful pass by Zach Stahl. So you look at uh, Drexel today without uh, Lee. They, Freddie Wilson had 24, Tavon Allen 22, and Rodney Williams 18. That's pretty good balance. And we were just talking that practice. We said without Damian Lee, Drexel was probably, they don't have a prayer to beat William & Mary today, and they put 80 points on them. I can't wait to see the tournament. <laughs> Baru tries to get inside to Bailey. It's knocked out of bounds. 13 on the shot clock, so plenty of time for the Cougars. As they trail by three now, 36 to 33. Baru has been battling. I like what Coach uh, Cohen was sent telling us uh, during their practice last night, huh? I mean, they, they lose to Elon. And uh, wasn't shell-shocked. They said they were disappointed. Nice move, and they get the hometown bounce as Chile gets his first puck of the second half. Very quickly off the main basket, uh, the Huskies are right back down here. But he was saying they weren't shell-shocked but disappointed but because, because everybody and anybody can beat anybody else in this league. Been proven over and over. William Mayer at one time had three losses to the bottom three teams in the league. They were still tied for first place. As a matter of fact, Coach, I wrote down this uh, quote by Joe Mahalik, and this was before College of Charleston knocked off William & Mary, before Delaware upset Northeastern. I'll get to it uh, right after this uh, possession by the Cougars. Kind of sums it up with one quote. Brew with the touch. He had that flush. He's had one basket in the first half. He's got two points. Down to four on the shot clock. Barry is way outside. A little bit short, and the long rebound comes down to Etherton. Not getting the uncontested three looks that they got in the first half. Northeastern turning it up a little bit on the defensive end. Lead by one. Good ball movement again. Good passing by the Huskies. They're inside 10 on the shot clock now. Ford gives it up. Etherton will try again and miss again. And there's going to be a foul on Baru. He thought he got the rejection, but Etherton's going to go back to the line. And we're going to take a timeout. 14.53 to go. It's been a tight one here in Charleston on senior night. Huskies 36, Cougars 35. Etherton on the line when we come back. We're back. The CAA Men's Basketball Championship returns to Baltimore. Bringing March Madness to Charm City, March 6th through 9th at Baltimore's Royal Farms Arena. Tickets on sale now. This is CAA Hoops. The road starts here. It's 3 p.m. For 50 million kids across America, school's out. And for a third of these kids, they're out on their own. Out with nowhere to go and nothing to do. But every afternoon is a chance to change America's future. 
All you have to do is open the door. It's time to support the Boys and Girls Clubs. Great futures start here. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. All right, back at Charleston as we take a look at the CAA. It's been a crazy season, uh, 18 years since uh, the champion had five losses. Champion could have six. William & Mary, the number one seed with a loss by UNCW. William & Mary, despite their loss uh, earlier today, uh, UNCW, if uh, they won and William & Mary lost, they'd get the number one seed, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Northeastern, a three with a victory, a four if they lose, and the JMU wins. JMU already won. And uh, there's the Phoenix in the second half over the Seahawks, 69 to 51. Ouch. Yeah, I think you could almost call that on election night. <laughs> well, and we see uh, two teams here on senior night, 58% for the Huskies in the first half. They're now shooting 25% in the second half, 55% for the Cougars. They're shooting 20%. So defense, uh, the name of the game here so far. And Etherton still looking for that first field goal. He's got five free throws in the game. Yeah, they need, Northeastern needs to get Etherton involved. Uh, and and uh, th they have gone to him, but he hasn't been able to finish, and Baru has been a big reason for that. Six free throws for Etherton, six points, and we have a three-point game again at 38-35. to 35. Well, we mentioned at the top of the show, the College of Charleston uh, holding opponents to less than 42%, which is number two in the conference, so... There's a feed inside the post, the whistle before the shot, and the foul is going to go against Etherton. Yeah, and, and you notice the college has gone to a more traditional lineup now with two bigs in the lineup. And again, Coach Cohen has to counter that with what he's doing offensively and defensively. A little chess match, as they say, between the coaches. 14 fouls. On the Huskies, good feed inside. The flesh is missed. There's the, they're going to call the foul. There's a very athletic Donovan Gilmore, the 6'7 freshman, got high above the rim. Good feed. Ball screen. Stitt creates the help. Can't finish, but the reason he didn't finish, apparently he was fouled by Reggie Spencer. It was kind of a late whistle, though, in my opinion. In your opinion. <laughs> I'll pass that along to those guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gilmore, 55% shooter from the floor, 68 from the free throw line. He had 11 points against Hofstra, his first double figure game since January 10th. Very athletic player, but they say his uh, athleticism uh, probably exceeds his basketball skills, but that's going to change as they work with him. And he's going to be a good one. Good looking freshman, probably the best athlete on the team but still learning how to play, like you mentioned. Walker, deep shot, a little bit shy, chases down his own rebound, and he plays. Boy, Walker's been playing above the rim, too. I'll meet you above the rim. <laughs> he was elevating, uh, but it looked like uh, the Cougars said, not in our house, not tonight. Good play. Follows his own shot. You always say that. And that was clearly above the rim. A good battle. No quarter given. Well, this guy's almost automatic from the stripe now. 13 points. Barry goes out. So Johnson comes back in. Johnson, a one-time, big-time SEC football recruit. He was the uh, second-best uh, quarterback in his conference uh, behind Deshaun Watson, who wound up at Clemson. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. Walker with 14. As a matter of fact, Johnson said before well, basketball had just started, the workouts, he was watching college football, and he had that that hunger, that pang, you know, like, geez, I miss playing football. Maybe I should have played football, but he's going to be a good one here on the basketball courts. That's a really good freshman year. Like you mentioned, a really bright future. 
A little bounce pass down on the baseline. Good help defense and nowhere to go. And he traveled with the basketball. Good job by Northeastern that time. Cutting the baseline off. Causing the turnover. And that's five turnovers this half for the Cougars. Got off to a slow start again. Joe, Joe Chile just left the floor limping uh, fairly heavily. Goes down to the end of the bench. And the trainers are looking at him. Yeah, I don't know if they just uh, knock knees with somebody, but. Well, they certainly need him on the floor. Boy. Bounce pass trying to sneak in the backside, and this time Spencer's going to go to the line shooting a couple. Boy, they really do pass the ball well, don't they? They do, and they keep attacking the rim. They're not settling for threes. They've only taken three the entire game, and this will be their 16th and 17th free throws. There's Geely's numbers, nine points, so 50%. Uh, now it looks like they're going to look at his ankle. They can ill afford to lose him, especially with the uh, tournament coming up. Reggie Spencer gets his sixth point. Good free throw shooter off the bench, almost 80%. So. 36 points away from 1,000. He might get it this year. 35 points away from 1,000. Well, they're capable of a, bit of a deep run in the tournament. There's no question about that. Yeah, Walker came in 37 points shy of 1,000. Uh, he's got 14 already. Wow. Quick hands by Bagley. Whoa, 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 whoa. How often have you seen that? They were still sweeping the floor. And look at Bagley just smiling. And he put a move on it. Yeah, he put a move yeah. on the mop guy. We got to take another look at that one. So Gary McCullough, cue up your tape there in the truck. That was, uh, boy, Begley came back just laughing. Watch this now. Watch the movie puts on the uh, the young man sweeping the floor. Great steal. He's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I guess no harm, no foul. I guess. Thank goodness everybody escaped without injury. He almost tripped on the. The broomstick. I've never seen that before. Young man, he's still a little red in the face. <laughs> yeah. He just wanted some TV time, I think. He was working at it now. <laughs> he was doing his job. A little skip pass. Barry usually nails that shot. A little bit shy, and Stahl runs down the rebound. Good job. 11 turnovers now for the Cougars. They each had six at the break, so that's five already here. We have 12.40 to go. Yeah, off to that slow start in that category again. Got to continue to play good defense, get stops. There's one. Yeah, they are playing good defense, but they certainly make you play defense, don't they, with all the uh, the dribbling and the passing going on. They sure on. do. They sure do. They're always attacking you. Cougars up by one at halftime, trailing by nine now, 44 to 35. They don't want to chase points too long against this Husky team. And looking inside for the freshman, Gilmore. Some miscommunication. Another turnover. This one unforced. Yeah, that's 12. That's their average with 12 minutes to go yet. That's a lot of time. A lot of room for more turnovers if they don't slow that down. 12-14 to go. Senior Knights. Huskies with a chance for a share of the title. They lead by nine.
Zach Stahl, just to the right of your screen there with the uh, the towel, we mentioned the fact that uh, he's shooting 78% the last three games, certainly having a big game shooting the ball tonight. Yeah, and, and a 56% free throw shooter anyway, and, and a great rebounder. Uh, you know, despite the fact that he's only 6'5", he's 11th in the Colonial and 9th in the Colonial in offensive rebounds. You've seen a couple of those tonight contributing to his 4-for-4 four four effort. Yeah, 4-for-4 four four from the field, 1-for-1 one one from the line, so he has yet to miss a shot. Nine points, and his team leads by nine right now with 12-14 to go. He's also a big reason that the College of Charleston really hasn't established anything inside either. Baru with two and really no other post-up baskets. And that was a, a dunk early on. Walker. T.J. Williams, and he's going to be fouled. So T.J. Williams, been double figures two of his last three games, just one for four. Another timeout on the floor, so we're going to take another timeout. Uh, this time we'll use one of our TV timeouts inside 12 minutes. 44-35, Huskies on the road with the lead. job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Back to Charleston, a 44 to 35. Uh, David Walker's Huskies on top by nine with 11.58 to go. We'll be here inside this building uh, tomorrow on ASN as the uh, Seahawks from UNC Wilmington take on the Cougars uh, of Charleston. On the women's side, uh, Candace Jackson in his first, her first year after uh, assisting uh, Joanne P. McCauley over at Duke. And Adele Harris at UNC Wilmington uh, had a 46 point score in their last game in overtime, Bree Mobley. They've got a couple of big time scores there for UNCW. Speaking and Nate Ross on the color. Yeah, good to see Nate uh, in the house. He was way over in uh, near over at Winthrop today, and he hustled back to uh, watch the senior night here in Charleston. Of course, he had to come back. He lives here, so I mean, <laughs> sooner or later he had to come back. It's pretty good judgment <laughs> to live here, right? You see the free throws, 23 to five. The discrepancy there. Yeah, and the reason is that we keep talking. Northeastern is attacking, attacking, attacking. <laughs> Chile's back on the floor, and he's on the line now looking for a double-figure game. It's good to see him back after he went out limping. So he's got 10 points. I'm sure that uh, that discussion was had while he was over there on the bench. We're not getting anything going to the hole, so we're not going to get fouled. Well, they got fouled that time, and he hits both. Uh, he's got 11. He had 23 the first time these teams met. Little zone press. Trying to disrupt things. Begley, the freshman, are running things on at the point now for the Huskies. Done a nice job. Brought a lot of energy and 
activity to the basketball on both ends of the floor. Did a great job missing the, the broom boy a couple of minutes ago. And that transition bucket. They're down to seven on the shot clock now for Etherton. Deep corner, down to four. Skip pass. Begley knocks it down right at the buzzer. Uh, as a coach, you love that possession. You used 35 seconds and got three points and a beautiful assist by Walker. He's a 42% shooter from out there, but that's only his 12th this year. Barry likes the shot, a little bit shy again, and the rebound is, well, this is gonna be a held ball situation, and the arrow points down this end, so it's gonna be Husky basketball. 80 to 66, the Dragons of Drexel put off the upset against William & Mary. Elon, that is a final now, so UNCW could have had the regular season championship all by themselves. It's not gonna happen, we could have a four-way tie. Yeah, still a great year in his first year for Kevin Keats oh, at Wilmington. Oh, unbelievable. So he'll have a share of the title too. And Pick they, ninth in the league and probably with a share of the title. And probably coach of the year, I would think in the CAA. A lot of good choices, but he did a great job. I mean, I don't have a vote, but if you're picked ninth and you win a share of the title. <laughs> Again, Baru against Etherton, advantage Baru on the defensive end. Wow, did you see uh, Chile change directions? Etherton takes a blow to the face and he goes down, but no whistle. Boy, Chile really showed an explosive burst. And whatever was bothering him is not bothering <laughs> no, him anymore. Not at all. Or he got a really good tape job over there. There's a reach by the Cougars, uh, Chile. Well, he called that team together quickly. Uh, uh, Grant telling us yesterday, no vocal leaders, but Chile did a nice job that time right after the whistle, got the team together. Rally the troops with 10 minutes to go, 10.03 to go. They got some making up to do here, and uh, the next foul puts Northeastern in the double bonus. This is almost like the double bonus with a uh, great free throw shooter on the line like David Walker, 85% on the year. Yeah, even the bad ones bounce in. Uh, this one was off to the left, and he still got the bounce to go, and he's uh, seven for seven from the line, eight for eight, and 16 points. The Cougars have not gotten those uncontested threes like they did in the first half. Whether it's execution, ball movement, sharing the basketball, not seeing the same looks they got. And of course it can be defense by Northeastern too. Bruce, skip pass, Bailey, deep corner. Kind of hurried the shot. Almost came up with the steal to no avail, Husky basketball, they're up now 51-37. Yeah, even on the skip pass, he, he had to rush that just a little bit. Hetherton's bounded, determined to hit that field goal. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, I can't get it inside, Baru's down there, I'll take a three. And he's a pretty good three-point shooter. <laughs> he's made eight on the year. Didn't really come close on that one though. He's coming off his eighth 20-point game. Averaging 15, still looking for that first field goal. Six free throws in the game. But you know what, team player, he doesn't look frustrated. I'd be out there pulling my hair out. It's a veteran bunch. Like we said, preseason picked to win the league. And, and they've got a shot to tie for that title. Walker, good peripheral vision to find the open man, but they uh, come up empty-handed. Baru, just looking for us. Some room, Etherton's not giving him any room down there to move. Hadn't been much real offensive play on the block. Chile takes care of business, taking it to the rack. He's got 13. Yeah, he, he has that, he's coming back in the game with a different attitude. And he is attacking and giving the Cougars some good looks. Begley, nice look inside, stall, too much traffic and he travels. Couldn't find the handle of the ball. Substitutions, uh, TJ Williams back in. Begley, the freshman, goes out uh, for Bill Cohn. 
You're right, though. You hit the nail on the head. Begley really gave him some energy out there. And yeah, did a very nice job. Both ends of the floor. Big steal. Put a move on the mop boy. Made a big three on an assist by David Walker. See if the Cougars can get something going on the offensive end. They shot 55% in the first half, had the lead. Now stuck on 39 as we approach the eight minute mark. Cameron Johnson drove it to the hole, hoping to get the contact. Didn't get the call. Nice job by Glenn Pierre Jr. on Etherton. Ford. College is doing a good job on those ball screens. TJ Williams lights up a three. Doesn't take many, but he shoots 36% from out there, and that's a big basket, putting the lead at 15 with seven and a half to go. There's a reach. Uh, we're inside the eight minute mark, so we're going to take another timeout here from Charleston. Huskies need the win for the number three seed. They need the win uh, to get a share of that championship after the uh, two upsets in the CAA so far today. William and Mary and UNCW both go down. Huskies on top, 54-35. TJ Williams, a 6'3 sophomore from Pflugerville, Texas. He's got eight. Fifty-four thirty-nine. Now let's take a look at the CAA standings uh, right now. The uh, this the final regular season night. This is the final regular season game here in the CAA. William and Mary, twelve and six after losing to Drexel. UNCW could have they had a shot at that championship in Keats's rookie season. They lost to Elon, so Elon pulls off back-to-back -back upsets. They're twelve and six. Northeastern, if they win, they'll be twelve and six. James Madison won today, so they're 12 and six. So we'll have a four-way tie if the Huskies hold on. And again, it's been 18 years since they had, the champion has had five losses. And the last uh, time someone shared the championship was back in 2006. The ring people are very happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, huh? Good execution to get that three point. It's a first good look they've had. But two for 12 in the second half for the College of Charleston. Yeah, four champion. That's a good point. How much do you, th how much do you think they charge a school for uh, the rings for everybody on the team? It's a good number. Some salesman making some. Give me a ballpark number. Come on. Oh, and there's a limit to how much you can spend on each ring. Well, you won championships. Come on, tell us. I mean, yeah, that was back in the day. That was back in the old days. You had five tournament champions. Gold's gone up a lot since then. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. <laughs> Obviously, you don't want to go there, so we'll <laughs> Ajaya Baru, the 6'9 senior on the line. There's Earl Grant. His first season. Earl is saying right now, 
you know we've only shot seven free throws, right? <laughs> exactly. You know they've shot 25, right? Or something to that effect. Well, you summed it up uh, very astutely. Huskies have been attacking the basket. That's, that's where they're getting all the free throws. Huskies only had 12 free throw attempts in that last game against Elon. They lost. 6.40 to go. Is that enough time for Achille and company to make a comeback? Achille is certainly doing his part. No doubt. That's forward right to the rim since he came back in the game off of whatever injury he had. Eight in the second half. Now he's got 15. They've got 41 after scoring 40 in, uh, in the first half. It looked like they'd score in the 70s the way they were s s shooting the ball in the first half. T.J. Williams with a nice drifting shot with the left hand. He's in double figures with 10. Very good, and we mentioned it before. If Northeastern gets to 70, they're undefeated. They're 11-0. Yeah, they got 56. Wow, a nice spin move by Barry. Really good, and, and you can see a concerted effort. This is different. This is different. College of Charleston has changed how they're attacking on the offensive end. Earlier in the broadcast, I said we we're going to quiz you on the Barry family where they played. So get ready, we're gonna go to that shortly. Barry with that bucket went into double figures. Etherton, last touch by the Cougars, 13 on the shot clock now for the Huskies. I'll be over here Googling. <laughs> you know him, you know him. Wow, Etherton, still looking for that first field goal. We're talking about a young man with 30 double-doubles in his career, 19 last year. Baru's only got two points, but he has done a job on the defensive end. No doubt, Etherton knocks it out this time, gets the rejection. So the Cougars. Going to the rim, Etherton, get out of here. Okay, next time the ball goes out of bounds, I'm gonna quiz you on the berries. I just didn't wanna take away from any of the action here. It was John, Drew, Scooter, Brent. All played Division I college basketball. Of course, uh, the sons of Rick Berry, the all-time NBA great. Baru trying to uh, get something going physically inside. He's fouled. That's going to be uh, 17 fouls now. Okay, very quickly, uh, you got John Berry. Where did he play? Georgia Tech. Drew Berry. Georgia Tech. Very good. Okay, uh, Brent. Brent, that's a tough one. It was out west. Let's say Oregon State. Ooh, you got it. And Scooter. Oh, that's easy. Kansas. And he won the national championship. Very good, very good, very good. Well, of course, uh, Rick Berry played his college ball where? Miami. There you go. You're perfect. You got an A. You're a four-point student, just like uh, Canyon Berry. He was playing way before you. He was playing it back in my day. Oh, no, I remember Rick Berry. Matter of fact, I thought his, I was hoping his son would go to the line tonight and uh, shoot those diaper shots like Rick Berry used to shoot. Eight on the shot clock now for the Huskies. Quincy Ford looking for somebody, so he takes the shot himself. Boy, boy, there's a lot of action underneath that rim. Chile stops. Rims out. That would have been big. Get it down to 10. But time is running out. Boy, the Cougars 0 for 8. You saw that 6 for 10. The start of the game. Wow. Nice spin. Trying to feed Etherton. A little help from your friends. They're trying to make sure Etherton gets away with at least one field goal tonight. Yeah, Etherton's he's having a like a human kind of night. He, he, he's usually doing superhuman things. But six points, six rebounds. That looks pretty good, but not for him. We're working that shot clock, shortening this game. Shot clock down to seven again for Walker. Walker, a little hesitation. Wow, really wow. used, sealed off the defender with his body. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play, which would give him 20 if he hits the free throw. Uh, watch the play from Walker. This is how you play the game. Coming off the ball screen, hesitation dribble. 
change speed, go by the big guy, draw the contact, and look at him keep his eyes on the rim. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins, not the shiny nail biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. Back in Charleston, you see uh, John Crest there with the uh, the suit coat on and uh, the tie inducted into the uh, College of Charleston Hall of Fame. It's quite an honor. You're a, you're a member of the uh, Tennessee Chattanooga Hall of Fame, correct? Tennessee Chattanooga had only got to coach against Coach Crest one time. It was in our tournament, and uh, we squeaked out a two-point win over one of his really good teams. He had uh, Busby, Delaney, had some really – Johnson had some really good players on that team. And uh, But, again, that, his success was just, you know, phenomenal down here. And uh, he truly is a legend, uh, continues to work here at the school. And uh, uh, a absolute great call to waive the rule that you can't get in while you're working at the school. Oh, well, you could fire him. Say, hey, we got to <laughs> – what do you want? You want to work or do you want to be a member of the Hall of Fame? Uh, 22 for 26 now for Northeastern from the free throw line. 22 points versus five for nine from Charleston. You don't have to look very far to find the difference in this game. And Walker now a perfect nine for nine from the line. And uh, you mentioned uh, Chile trying to put the team on his back. There's no doubt about that. He took it hard. Into the rim, he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Walker with 20 points now, so he ties Etherton with his eighth 20-point game this year. Achilles doing everything he can do. The sophomore out of Orlando, a Popka High School, and he's been to the free throw line five times. He's got all five of their makes from the free throw line. And we mentioned Chile uh, with 23 in the first meeting, a 69 to 67 loss. He was uh, three for five from a long range, seven of 14, six for six from the free throw line in that game. And, and we talked before the game. Uh, this is the this is the lowest scoring team in the league, College of Charleston. They are averaging 59, and they're probably not going to make it to 59 tonight. Yeah, defense has never been a problem for uh, Coach Grant. But putting points on the board, they put 80 against William and Mary, 85 against uh, Charlotte earlier in the game. We I called saw that, but 16 yeah. threes that night. Well, Reggie Spencer looking for that 1,000 point season. He fouled out, so if he's going to get it, he'll have to come in the CAA tournament and uh, potentially in the NCAA tournament. He had a pretty good performance off the bench, gave him some valuable minutes, seven points, and played really well in the defensive end. You're not going to see a shot before uh, single digits on the shot clock out of Northeastern the rest of the way unless it's a layup. Wow, nice touch. And Stahl, that's his first bucket in the second half, but he's perfect shooting the ball, and he's got uh, 11 points. Yes. 
11.6 rebounds, really had a good game, and again, always is a good defender. And he pulls down a seventh rebound. Cougars are not finding many uncontested shots. Wow. There's, There's Heatherton. the bucket. There he is. He can thank Walker for that one. You can just see the relief on his face. <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> he made sure that one went down, didn't he? His eyes got really big. Barry lights or tries to light up with a three and good battle and one for Terrence O'Donohue. Really nice offensive rebound, stick back. Again, a really talented player, just to, you know, trying to make good decisions and learning how to play. But got a bright future, just a sophomore out of North Cross, Georgia. Well, did you see that pass by Walker? Remind you of Magic Johnson when he played for the Lakers and the no look touch David, pass. David Walker is absolutely one of the best players in the CAA. He was preseason third team CAA, but yeah, he plays the game. He just uh, he, he just plays it like a good basketball player, doesn't he? He may have outperformed the prediction. Very unselfish. Twenty point game and. How many assists does he have? Well, they only have him listed for three. But uh, the loss against Elon, 17 points, six assists, six rebounds. This one's rejected by Glenn Pierre Jr. We're inside two minutes now. This game really has gone flying by, and Chile lights up a three. So Chile, who had 30 against Charlotte, uh, that three puts him at 20. And 13 of those have come in the second half as he's tried to put his team on his back. Yeah, and right now, you know, Coach Grant's coaching. He's, he's coaching for this game, but he's also coaching for the future. You want to play these last few minutes. This is a really nice move. Create some space by Chile. Knock it down. Really good offensive play. We talked about early on, he recognized that he was his best playmaker, and we've seen that here in the second half. But, but they don't have time to play possessions now. They, they're going to have to put them on the free throw line, and that's going to be dangerous. They're already 22 for 26 on the game, over 85%, and they're the third best free throw shooting team in the Colonial. Oh, Chile with 20, as you say, uh, building for the future, the future. As far as shooting the basketball, you're 59 points. Uh, that should improve next year. He's, recruit, he's recruited a point guard, and he has another shooting guard coming in. And uh, you see Gilmore is a 6'7". He's a freshman. Uh, Pierre Jr. 6'11". He's only a sophomore. You mentioned Cam Johnson. We talked about Earl Grand, and he's learned from a couple of the best. He's with Brad Brown now. He's with Greg Marshall. He, he, he's been with good coaches. He knows the game and has always been an outstanding recruiter. And this is a pretty darn good place to recruit to. He's going to the bench. As a matter of fact, he was almost uh, an assistant coach here one time. You mentioned Coach Marshall. Marshall accepted the job and just uh, hours later changed his mind. Etherton with the hook shot, and he almost had his second field goal. He's got eight points with a minute uh, 10 to go now. Chile. Barry's been working hard as well. Down on the baseline, gets the rebound, and uh, he's pushed out of bounds. He's fouled. And I think the seniors are going to get their recognition here at the end of the game. That's my bet with those three guys over there on the uh, sideline getting ready to check in. Yeah, you look at Canyon Barry earlier in the broadcast. I mentioned uh, last year on senior day, his uh, rookie season, as he shoots that diaper free throw. He had 27, but he's mixed his repertoire, his offensive repertoire, a lot better this year. He's driving the ball more. As Coach Grant uh, goes to the bench, uh, Pat Brandon back in. The three seniors are on the floor together. Brandon, Brew, and Stitt. And we have one minute to go. Huskies are going to bounce back after losing to Elon, and they're going to grab a share of the title after uh, being the preseason number one pick. And Etherton has a double-figure game. This will make them 10-1 and one in games after a loss. And Coach uh, Cohn said if we didn't win a share of the title, uh, it's disappointing, but it's all about the tournament, which is uh, very true. And uh, Barry's going to have a chance for another three-point play. 
really a nice play by Stitt. Turns the corner, drives it in the lane, draws the defense, and dishes it down low to Barry. Speaking of the diaper shot like his dad, uh, he opened up his collegiate career at Louisville. There's 22,000 people waiting to see that shot, and he had an off night. He did not have a good night. He bounced back, of course. He knocks down that uh, free throw, so uh, he's got 14. Can you imagine your rookie year, first games in front of 22,000 people at Louisville? Etherton gives it up. Uh, no room for Williams. He walks with the basketball. And we've got 12.5 seconds remaining. And here's the recognition of the seniors. Nice round of applause, starting to get a standing ovation now. Good crowd here tonight, despite the fact that the students are on spring break. You said Ajay Baru, by the time he finished up, he could have went anywhere, huh? But Bobby Kremens got him to come here. Yeah, he, he was very heavily recruited, and, uh, and Coach Kremens uh, always been magic in the, in the living room, talking the guys into coming to wherever he was at, whether it be Appalachia State, Georgia Tech, or College of Charleston. Leaves with eight rebounds. So he uh, finishes uh, number five all time, number three all time at the Division I level here at Charleston. Went over 900 rebounds, 907 to be exact, as he heads for the CAA tournament. There's a little crowd pleaser inside. There's a freshman, Gilmore. There's part of the future. Great pass from Chile. And that's going to do it. So we're going to have a, a 65 to 56 final. And we'll throw it to a break. When we come back, we'll hear from uh, the head coach, Bill Cohen, who won the championship outright two years ago, and now he grabs a share of the title. 65 to 56, the Northeastern Huskies win it. And we have a four-way tie at the top of the CAA. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching. So it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Don't worry. The 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon.